You want to draw a flower, but not just any flower. You want to draw the most romantic flowers of all the flowers, the king of flowers. You want to draw the rose. I'm going to show you a quick and beautiful way to do that. If you find this video helpful at all, please hit that like button in the corner. Give this video a thumbs up so that it can find other lost souls who also need a flower in their life. So in my opinion, the secret to drawing a rose that a lot of people overlook is that it, it comes from a stem. The rose stems from a stem, and actually it stems from a rose bud, which is why I'm drawing a rose bud first, and then I'm slowly going to be adding more volume to the blossom by adding more mature petals. And I have to remember that it's almost as if you've taken a piece of cloth and twisted it, and the petals actually furl outward in a slightly spiral fashion. So they are going to be overlapping, they are going to be casting shadows on one another, and they also kind of furl out at the very tip. So if you notice, I'm actually drawing the shape of the petal, but then I'm leaving like this mass, this voluminous mass at the very end. And that is what will give it the volume and the appearance of a full-blown rose. So when I say that, I mean that the leaves and the petals overlap kind of like this. Like you have to remember that it does come from one center source and then it just spreads out from there. But back to the actual drawing of the flower, um, yeah, just remember that it just kind of unfurls. And as I'm ready to color, I'm going to just do the whole thing in one base color. And I'm choosing to do kind of like a pinky orangey rose. So what I'm doing is the center of the blossom is more saturated because it hasn't been exposed to the elements as longer. They're all younger petals. So they're more saturated. They're more of like a, a vibrant orange. Whereas the outside petals, they've been exposed to the elements a bit more. They've maybe been hit by the sun a bit too much. So they're actually going to be a pale, dusty pink. And something else that I have to keep in mind when I'm doing this is that the base of the petals will always be a bit darker, a bit more vibrant than the very tip of the petals. So the very tip of the petals will be a lighter hue and the very base of the petals will be a darker hue. And there's a gradation that happens there that I'm going to be working in ever so slightly as I color this. And I'm a big fan of the smudge tool. I mean, if I was painting this traditionally, I'd be blending my colors in and my pigments in together all the time. So what I'm doing now is I'm using the smudge tool and I'm just kind of blending in the direction of the petals and kind of like outward from the base and more inward from the tips. And I do add more saturation in layers, kind of like in traditional painting, you would be adding glazes. That's how I'm doing my rose as well, because it is a very delicate thing. You don't want to just like plaster in a purely saturated red or a purely saturated orange right from the get-go. You do want to kind of build up your color. At this point, I've actually decided to get rid of my sketch layer in its entirety, and I've decided I'm just going to make this work simply using the painted voluminous masses. So how I'm doing that is I'm utilizing the sharp shadows and the sharp highlights, and I'm just building up on the volume I've already created with my various painting techniques from earlier. At this point it does look a bit fake and a bit messy and a bit maybe a bit artificial but that's okay because we're going to blend this all out anyway and these very sharp highlights and these very sharp shadows are just going to like blend in seamlessly with the blossom. Just wait, you'll see.
and now I'm experimenting putting in some complementary colors as a background and I did kind of cut out the shapes of the petals with some white earlier so I'm just going to blend that in with the background and I think that is something very important that I didn't quite mention earlier is the tips of the petals they do furl outward but they also are a bit jagged and they're a bit um n imperfect imperfect a good word to put it uh so yeah they do they do flutter a bit there you have it, now you know. If you would like to find tips on drying other things, then please check out my channel. Otherwise, find me on my socials, which you can find in the caption below. Beautiful.